gmail.com. Maximize magnificence at gmail.com. Hit me up on my Facebook page, Maximize. And we are back. Well, Mr. Sean, right. you look at that <laughs> razzling and dazzling, the YouTube audience out there. Woo. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we're gonna get your we're gonna get your your workshop full. Amen. Yeah, That's right. We, we're claiming Good. it today that it's gonna be thank overflowing. You, thank you. More than people that That's you right. need to know. That's right. you know. So wow, I am so pleased. So I our guest, I have uh, another powerful woman in the house here. And she is one of those hidden figures <laughs> that we, we saw not long ago uh, in the engineering field. And Jovita Jenkins. That's right, Jovita. Another, another Bella. Yes. Another from the Bella from the Bella Network. Yes. So let me see. Jovita, let me pull up your as soon as my computer pops back up. But you probably can tell me about you faster than my computer can tell me from your bio. So tell me about yourself. Well, now I am an executive leadership coach, an author, and a speaker, and an educator. Okay. I'm retired aerospace. I was one of the first black women engineers in the aerospace industry on this coast. Okay. I didn't know about the Hidden Figures ladies until the movie came out. Mm. But when they started, I was still in high school. Okay. But I should have known about that. They should have talked about that when you were in school. That's right. But nobody did. Did you hear about any of the... The things that um, engineering, on the engineering side of the house mm -mm. when you were in school. In fact, as a woman, weren't you told girls shouldn't like mathematics? Yeah. yeah. Which mm -hmm. is why they never really pushed us to really excel in mathematics, actually, because right. that was a, technically a, a man's kind of sport. Uh, and, and it was almost like, you know, if it, it's okay if you don't do well at math because you're not going to have to need that anyway. Yeah, but you really do. You do. You do. You, you and, really do. And for me, whenever I was told you shouldn't like it uh -huh. or you shouldn't, you don't need to know that, well, I wanted to know why not. Okay. Is that why? So <laughs> when you were in school, in elementary school, you loved math? Well, yes, I liked school. I liked everything about school. But okay. I, I didn't start out because I wanted to be in math. I wanted to build robots for Disneyland. Oh, so you were all about the whole robotics, the whole engineering thing from a child. I <laughs> fell in love wow. in high school with the first robot I saw on television, mm. which is nothing compared to the kinds of robots that you see now. Okay. But I wanted to build robots for Disneyland. So now, did you grow up here in California? Or? I did. Okay, okay. So that was all part of it. Wow. So what were some of the, your parents, were they behind you? Always. Okay, so what were some of the things that they encouraged you to do? as you were growing up that kept your interest in being a in aerospace? Well, my parents always said you can do, be, and have anything you want. You just That's have fantastic. to yeah. put your mind to it and do it. So the people who were trying to pull me down were always on the outside of my family. It was never my family. They, mm. they just pushed me into whatever direction I wanted to go, and my brother as well. There's only two of us and two children in our family. Oh, okay. But I grew up in the, the civil rights era, and I was the first generation of people who were really given an opportunity to go out and do whatever they wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, we were at different times at that time because at that time you really, you know, we were fighting and we were proud of being who we were. And so we were proud to be black and we, we were proud to say that, um, yeah, I can be, if I wanted to be the president, because didn't she, about that time, Somewhere around that time, Shirley Chisholm is in, even, cause she was in politics, right. right? That's right, And she so was. she had talked about being the president at the, or, count, or Congress or something or that. Remember that when I was a child. And so had uh, Jesse Jackson ran for president, too. Right, wow. exactly. At one point. Yeah, because you came away. And I think even today with all that's going on, uh, you are we are feeling like we're empowered to do something. When we're rising up and protesting and, and fighting for what is right to us, just like um, uh, they did in the 60s. I think people are really starting to connect. And it was about a month after, well, a month after the election, but he, uh, number 45 had not been inaugurated as of yet. <laughs> number 45. Uncle, <laughs> number 45. Number 45. Okay. The, the orange dude in the, in yes, the office. That's what right. Whoopi calls him, the orange dude in the office. <laughs> But number five, you no, know, she the other day she called him the guy. The so guy. when the guy, um, before he the inauguration, 
people, even my nephews, they were like, wait a minute, we have to speak up. We can't, we can't let this happen. And now they were starting to engage in, because before that time, you'd hear people literally say, oh, you'd have people literally say, um, why do we have to have, keep having those, those slave movies? Why, why we got to do that? And you know, I'm not a history buff. I'm I'm a futurist as uh -huh. opposed to a historical person. But my husband was always the history buff. Okay. And if you don't know your history, then you may have to repeat it. And I do agree with that. Yeah. And we are in some ways repeating history now. I think we are because I always say this, and and you're a spiritual woman as well, um, uh, Deshaun. I always say God keeps giving you the same scenarios over and over again until you get it right. Oh, absolutely. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. He keeps yes. bringing things yes. back to you. Yes. Going like, right. Why am I back here? Right. And so my my philosophy is, if you're back here, it's because you didn't learn the lesson. That's right. So he let it pass. That's right. But he, it's time for you to come back mm -hmm. and readjust it. Absolutely. And readdress it. And I think that's why we're back here. It's time for us to readdress. And I just love the fact that the hidden figures and that we're speaking up. Because I don't even get, forget them telling us our history. What happened to those women? That was a whole room full of black people. That's absolutely right. right. A whole department full of black. Nobody spoke up. Well, you know, that was a different time. Yeah, it was a different time. It, it really was. and But we still aren't speaking up the way we should or stepping up to the kinds of things that we really need to be considering now. We need to be a lot more into technology. We really, really should and, and, and have a love for it. And we're into it because, you know, we're, we're doing Facebook Live right, here. Right, right. Um, we're doing a podcast, which is a whole new revelation <laughs> of radio because Absolutely. beyond just radio, you go on the radio and you have your show. It wasn't taped. It wasn't visual. Yes. You couldn't use it afterwards, right? Right, right. Back in the right. day, if you've, done, you've done a radio show before, right? right? Absolutely. Um, yes. Now we can take this, clip it all up. I can put it out on and when you know, our conversation, send your copy. You can use it to mo yes. uh, market yourself. You can use it to market yourself. That's all we're doing. We're in the midst of technology. Yes, but I want not just this on the the side of technology that's entertainment. I want to make sure that we are behind the scenes in the the organizations that are doing things like making the the robots. Right, and robotics. coming up with the the technology that you're using to to do your shows. Right, exactly. The ones that are really in the nitty gritty of this is how things are done. Right. Because everything is changing so much, and that's I want to see more of us uh, in the, the the aerospace companies, in the biotech companies, yeah. doing those kinds of things. You know where. And, and there's not enough of us out there. I, now, what programs, so the, obviously there were there programs when you were growing up, and are those programs still available to our kids today? <laughs> no, there were no <laughs> programs. Says, no, she okay. <laughs> so I found my way. When okay. I decided I, I saw the first robot I saw on television, I would call Disneyland because there was no Disney studio back right, then. Right, 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 right. And I asked whoever answered the phone, what would I have to major in in college if I wanted to be oh, wow. an audio Look animatronic technician? I was 16. Wow. So, you know, you have to figure out, kind of look at where you might want to go and then start trying to find information about that thing and how you can get closer to it. So that's how I picked my major in college. Luckily, okay. I like school. And, and the first thing out of this lady's mouth was mathematics. If she had said engineering first, I'd have engineering degrees. Right. But she said math. math. Okay. So oh. I have a bachelor's and master's in mathematics. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. And when I graduated, I, it was just at the time that the space race was heating up. Mm -hmm. And Rockwell was hiring anybody with a technology of any kind degree, and applied mathematics is the underlying of all engineering okay. anyway. Uh -huh. And I was uh, part of a training program. And before I completed my technical career, mm -hmm. I had uh, some of the jobs I had, you now have to have a, a master's degree in computer science to get. Okay. But then I switched over from actually doing all the work. And by the way, I worked on some really cool programs, like the first B-1 bomber, the first Ooh, space wow. station, the first space shuttle, a bunch of satellite programs. And then I went on to 
the other side, the business development and the, and the program acquisition. Uh huh. And now I my goal is to help as many people inside organizations who would like to to increase their level of influence, figure out how to move up and around inside organizations. Mm -hmm. You know, what are those hidden things that you aren't seeing? I so like the Hidden Figures movie, especially the the uh, one that was um, played by Dorothy Vaughn, mm -hmm. because she had her eye on where things were going mm -hmm. and knew that if we didn't move in the direction of the technology and the way it was going, we were going to be obsolete and left out. Yeah. And managed to take her whole team with her. I just thought that was absolutely amazing because that's that <laughs> And that was me. That was you. That Always was the sisterhood. Always looking for <laughs> where things were going, going. And, and how to be on the cutting edge of where things were instead of on the edge to get left out. And, and here's what I thought was also pretty interesting as well was when she went in there and she said, Okay, Fortran, and I needed to. I need to figure out what. And she goes to the library <laughs> yes. and reads and a book. And figures it right. She read a book. <laughs> That's where you you learn so much in books. Right, books are amazing. <laughs> I mean, she hear all these white guys right, right. there in the, in, right. the, in the doing their thing, and they can't figure it out, scratching their head. She goes to the library and borrows the tax. The way she said right. the book that she paid That's for right. in her taxes. That's right. And read a book, That's and then right. went back and taught all the women in the. the Department. Yes, right. resourceful. I thought right? that was so wonderful, yeah. and and I was just sitting there applauding for that part. Yeah, that was absolutely <laughs> fantastic. And I, more of us need to do that. Yeah, yes. exactly. Reach back and pull people up behind us. So That's when you cool. were starting out in that in that particular part of your career, were there other women with you? No. Or? You were by yourself, so me. you were in a man's world. Yes, absolutely. Wow. For most of my career, I was in a man's, man's world. world. And it's still a man's world. I thought it was going to to change more over time than it did. Mm -hmm. And and it seemed for a while to be going up. Mm -hmm. And now it seems to be going in the other direction again. Wow. But when I started, there was me, um, a couple of other black men, Mm -hmm. And everybody else was white and male. Because for a while there, wow. when everybody was going to school, they were going to school for engineering degrees. I had, I mean, before they started clo closing down Lockheed and Hughes Aircraft and all of those, everybody I knew was an engineer at some point. Really? Yeah, especially out here. Every everybody. Well, I didn't see that many of them. <laughs> not women. They weren't men. No, women. men either. Oh, really? Uh, not that were uh, women or men of color. Color. Uh huh. Yeah.